This is a straight grinder. It can cut through metal, cable, chain, hot dog, even bananas. We're going to take this angle grinder, not angle grinder, this is a straight grinder. <laughs> it literally just, it's straight rather than having a gearbox turning 90 degrees. We're going to take this cordless rotary tool and turn it into a flying machine. Are we going to do any flying machine? No, because this can fly as an airplane very easily. I think I can do that in like a day. So we're not going to do that. We're going to do a challenge. I'm going to take this rotary tool and turn it into a helicopter. At the request of all you fools commenting on the last power tool video. So what's inside this cordless rotary tool? Inside this tool, we have a brushed motor, mechanical, electrical speed controller doohickey, and we have a lithium battery. All these ingredients look very similar to what you find in a toy helicopter. Funny thing is, if you look over here, someone actually made a drone powered Dremel thing. I actually discussed this with my friends uh, at Rotorite, and they did that. Now, for them though, they deleted the speed controller, they deleted the battery, they only kept the motor. So I don't really count that as a real flying Dremel tool because you're really just using these generic brush motors you can get just about anywhere. So for this challenge, we're actually going to use the stock speed controller, the stock battery, the stock motor, the stock Dremel tool that we're going to try and fly. First thing we're gonna do, construct a pair of landing skids and then see if this stock Dremel tool can fly. How's it looking? Powerful. Now, unfortunately, I wanted to use this brand new Dremel tool I bought because it has a brand new motor for the most amount of power. Unfortunately, they went to this doohickey rotary dial, which is harder to interface with. So we're gonna use my old Dremel that's destroyed many projects in the past, and we're gonna fly that piece of junk around. Powering on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Not quite enough thrust with this prop. Let's try a little bit bigger <laughs> propeller. <laughs> it looks like it's trying to fly though. Right, on. Go. It's not centered. This crap is it's gonna vibrate like crazy. <laughs> Let's try this. This is a cool looking prop. Oh, it's too thick. It's too thick. <laughs> so now we have very big 10 inch propeller. This is going to be better. It had to burn itself up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. It really, got, it really has no kill switch. So that works. It flies. Yeah. But this is not how a helicopter really behaves. Now, fortunately, a long time ago, I designed this rubber band powered helicopter which has a stability requirements because this is like a normal propeller blade and helicopters do not have normal propeller blades on the top. They have very complex mechanical systems to deal with stability. However, the bare minimum that you need is a like a fly bar for a very mechanical kind of control. So I'm going to take this thing we made a long time ago, scale it up bigger and slap it on. And then we're gonna put a tail boom on it so it actually has like the proper torque management for the rotor blades and stuff. Then we're gonna try it again. Wow, we got a fuselage that threads perfectly onto the Dremel tool. This is looking pretty nice. And now we have... Oh God, it's too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> Shut up, don't laugh at me. So I 3D printed this gearbox because we want to swing a really, really large helicopter blade. And we need to reduce the RPMs of the Dremel to a more manageable RPM for like the rotor disc because we need more torque and less speed to turn such a giant propeller blade. Therefore, I made this. That's too savvy. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Let's see what kind of thrust we get. <laughs> I think it's flipping. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's got thrust. <laughs> All right, last thing to do is put that tail rotor on and then just try to. Okay, so it's set perfectly. This is a helicopter, like I said, you need some kind of torque control, so we have this little brushless motor here. Now, I've done the most laziest possible thing and directly hooked the speed controller to the rudder channel, so I have to manually control 
the torque. I mean, it requires more pilot skill. But I'm too lazy to try to configure a gyro to work with this doohickey. So we're just gonna try to fly it. Yeah, All right, only one thing to do. <laughs> Get some rudder! All right, rudder, this way. That CG's off. Can we get it? Move the bag more forward? Oh! oh no! <laughs> Glue back together. <laughs> Rip blades. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I think it's slipping. Yeah, it's slipping. It's slipping, yeah. <laughs> Look at those blades! <laughs> it's not gonna come <laughs> Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Oh, no! Oh, turn it off. <laughs> Fly bar is actually not having as much influence as they need it to have. This might have to get bigger, the fly bars. Roto chopter blades with the new enhanced fly bar. I did a lot of thinking and I figured out what the exact problem was. Scaling from the small rubber band powered model, which turns significantly higher RPMs with much lighter blades, it has a more stabilizing effect from gyroscopic forces of this thing spinning. However, the enlarged part as is didn't have enough mass, so it wasn't heavy enough to kind of influence this the way it should have been. Oh! So I reprinted the part, redesigned it with this much heavier counterbalance thing. So I think this is going to be way more stable. I'm really gonna check stability this time before I let it go because last time I let go, it destroyed itself. Oh, okay. I was just gonna... Wow. It doesn't like me moving it. It just gets back to center. All right, I guess it's time to try to fly it. Oh, no! Oh, no! no! Oh, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> it was getting lighter. Oh, okay, no. maybe you should make it have a little bit more durable thing than yeah, just this maybe. thin balsa. And we previously destroyed these really thick blades because um, the flyer wasn't strong enough, so it collided with the helicopter boom. We're gonna try to reinstall these now with the carbon strip, and hopefully we see Sturdy. some <laughs> different results. So these won't break, hopefully. <laughs> There's also a lot more meat on these. Those other blades, I kind of depend on them to turn a higher head speed where these will have a lower rotor head speed. So hopefully there's less stress on these big fat ones too. This is never gonna fly. These have to come off, these have to be balanced. Oh! <laughs> Unbroken blade on the scale. 20 grams. 14 grams. Oh, oh. oh you probably sanded these to different consistencies. Look at this. Look at your airfoil! <laughs> what kind of homework did you do? This homework, this airfoil is completely different hey, profile. All right. It's like a whole six grams off. See the kind of verbal abuse I had to put up with. Turn it on, let's see how it bounces. Yeah, that bounces better. We have to manually start the Dremel tool because the Dremel tool has two switches. It's got an on and off switch and then a speed selector switch. Now I obviously could add another servo to the on and off switch, but I like destroying his blades and making them, making him have to come turn it off. It's more funny that way. <laughs> Go quick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go fast. Put it back in the center. I think we might have to do a little bit of weight saving or something. Alright, here we go. Sit down, sit down. Oh! Do it! 
Kill the bird. It's so close to fly. <laughs> it's just a little overweight. It needs more thrust. Stop it down. Oh, the battery's dead. Oh. Oh, the Dremel battery's the dead? Dremel oh. The battery's dead. I thought you meant that battery controlling it was bad. No. Fully charged battery. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut up. It starts spinning so rapidly that I just countered the other way and it didn't seem to help. Oh, okay. so I like, might need more, more higher voltage or larger tail rotor. Hey, it's capable of flight though. <laughs> The time has come. <laughs> we are going to test the Dremel copter. We've done numerous tests at the workshop and I believe this Dremel is ready to go airborne. Ah! Oh no. Try it again. Full throw. Ah. Number three. Ah. Time number four. Give me the Allen wrenches. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll adjust that and we'll try it again. This is so much harder than it looks. Kill it, kill it, kill it. <laughs> if you guys wonder why I don't build a full scale helicopter, this is probably why. Come on. All right, well, I gave up on the little fusible pieces of wood and now we're using aircraft safety wire. So now if it crashes, it's definitely going to break. <laughs> Okay, kill it. <laughs> People accuse me of having projects that work all the time. Actually, come to think of it, I don't think anyone has ever accused me of that. But my god, this this thing is like really trying my patience today. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, needs more power. Kill it. Oh no. <laughs> it definitely broke that time. One tear rotor mount assembly. assembly. Oh no. You sheared the gears. Yeah, I need to reprint those. Still in the testing phase, because we haven't got a full lap. I won't be satisfied until we do one full lap with this contraption. Well, I did learn a few more things. Uh, we need to make more adjustments still. Unfortunately, a lot of these um, crashes have really bent pieces. So we need to make some more minor adjustments. It's been almost completely rebuilt. New shaft new safety pins. It's been upgraded to toothpicks instead of balsa wood shear pins, so now it's a little bit stronger. We have a brand new motor with more thrust because I think I ran out of tail authority with the previous setup. All right, Steven, get over here and turn this thing on. Okay, it's turning really fast. Yeah, honestly. it was turning pretty fast. I think it should do some more lift. Oh, the hub is, is, okay, I need for a new hub. I've determined that too low to the ground, there's too much rotor wash and interaction between the rotor wash and the airframe. So we're gonna lift it up because this thing has like actually no directional control other than y'all. So I'm gonna have him hand launch it like in the field. Yeah, okay. Ready? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> we need new blades again. It's another day, time to try it again. We just tried some more blade adjustments and hopefully this thing is just gonna fly just like normal. Oh, come on. 
come on. Oops, we broke these balsa wood blades. Let's swap them out for these basswood blades. Fortunately, made a bunch of blade replacements because I foresaw this. Oh, yeah! Just keep going! No! Oh, 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 <laughs> We're going, boys! Oh, come on! Oops, it crashed! We're going, boys! Oh. Okay, after looking at this crash again, I figured out what I need to do. I need to put a horizontal stabilizer on top because I think this thing is accelerating too fast because there's no pitch influence from anywhere in the machine. So I'm going to aerodynamically add this stabilizer to the top and hopefully fix that. Yes. Time to try it again. This time we've changed the rotor blade pitch a little bit and I've made some more adjustments to the fly bar. All right, check this out, Dave. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Immolent sent me this really cool flashlight. It goes up to 60,000 lumens. And if you're interested, check it down below. It's gonna help us fly this helicopter after dark because I live in Ohio right now and we have no more daylight. So. Wait, did the battery just drop out and stuff? Oh, it fell out. Oh no, <laughs> it didn't actually secure in. Oh no. Oh, oh man. Stop. Oh no, we can't patch right. it. Look at the carbon fiber. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> fix it again, Steven. <laughs> Over 150 maintenance hours on this bird. Freaking sucks, dude. I blame we, you. It's another day. Now we have even more mods. I have the stabilizer attached and we're just gonna go and send it. I really have given up on counting how many times this is taken. Did you pre-flight the aircraft? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It works though! That was the longest flight yet. <laughs> it came down in a hurry and it's <laughs> broken again. Let's trim that down again. And here you go, you can repair it one more time. <laughs> that is the most successful flight we've had so far out of all this. I'm gonna redo this again because I wanna make one more good flight. I want a little bit of a lap. If we can do that, I'll be happy. So now we're gonna make all these adjustments. This time I've adjusted the heads more because we kept bending the shaft on the head and I think it's gonna work. I have never crashed something this many times, at least I don't think. So we picked a pretty bad day because it's blowing pretty good. We're gonna go over there in the shadow and launch it. Try to see how high a Dremel tool can really fly. All right, you ready? Bring up the speed. Hey, did you pre-flight this thing? <laughs> ah. Every single time. Okay, it's another day. This time I've adjusted the fly bar because I got tired of the helicopter crashing and snapping these little eensy beansy pieces of carbon fiber. Now we got this big old thick one. Starting the blades. All right, give me more RPM. I turn it off. I plugged the battery. It's not working. I plugged the battery. Because I want this to work. Oh, you guys. We're going to go. shed the landing gear. I don't know why it's got such slow power this time, but yeah. We're gonna lose that. Hang on, it cheered out. the pin. <laughs> oh, did it? Just okay. push the. Let me just grab a new. Yeah. Can this thing just work? I want to be done. I want it to go up in the sky. <laughs> okay, here we go. Take number a million. Keep it going. Go get it, Peter. 
I'm fighting it. I mean, we could fix it, probably. I think we should probably try to. Ah, <laughs> oh, the camera is out. Ah! <laughs> what part of it went out? <laughs> the camera. And unfortunately, this isn't working. As you can see, it's underpowered, and this aerodynamic load from this thicker wire is just too much. It's a good so day. We go back now. Yes, this is actually another day. Now we have all of the changes, some new, some old, and hopefully we get one good flight. <laughs> it turns out that flashlight is about dead because I forgot to charge it. Let's just fly it. I'm turning it on. All right, you ready? Yes. Got it. Why is it so bad? I don't know. What did it hit? Your bumper? You no, know, it bounced off the hood of the car. Oh. <laughs> Measure. <laughs> that was the longest flight yet! <laughs> Alright, Dremel Copter. I'm done with this. <laughs> Dremels can fly. I tried to grab the drum. Watch, you'll see me struggle here. Look at this. Uh, oh, I dropped it. Uh, I dropped you're it too again. busy trying to watch it. I know, I'm trying to see where the heck you're flying. Yeah, like a little bit of frame there. No. And then you crashed it. Missed it. You finally managed to fly the Dremel powered helicopter with the blade adjustments, the fly bar adjustments, the gearing assembly. There's actually a lot of torque going on here, so I had to redesign this thing like a couple times. But fortunately, we've had one full flight, kind of. No successful landings here, but we did manage to fly a stock Dremel tool. I should really work on a control scheme for some of these projects. Let me know what other future video suggestions you have for power tools, because we are definitely going to make some of your other weird requests. Maybe we'll do the weed eating tool next. I thought it was gonna go down, but for some reason it like had more power. And as they came around here, then the RPMs just get dropped, and then I was like, that's it. <laughs> Yeah.